insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 25, Social Media. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my talented and inspirational co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are we doing today, Madison? Pretty good. So we are recording a little off schedule today. Uh, We typically record our podcasts Saturdays, usually Saturday mornings. Uh, We'll be otherwise occupied this weekend. Yep. So we're actually recording this on Wednesday evening this week. Yep, and we're releasing our podcast on Monday as usual, which is kind of weird for us. Yes, it'll still be released on schedule, uh, but this will give me time to get the editing and everything done on it. Yep. So, social media. Do you use it? Um, I guess, yes. Okay. To a certain extent. So that's the topic for today. Yep. We will define what it is. Like we normally do. In relatively broad terms this week. Okay. We will talk about why teens use social media. I could think of a few reasons why. I'm sure you could. Um, We will look at the good and the bad aspects of social media. Because there are that. Because there are many aspects. There are. We will look at the statistics or some statistics on social media that I thought were kind of interesting. Hey, statistics. We haven't heard about them in a while. Yeah, I haven't pulled out the statistics in a while. Yep. Then we will talk about some important things to remember when using social media. And then, as usual, we'll finish up with our with your closing remarks and shout outs. Yep. So, questions, comments, snide remarks, bad mm-hmm. jokes? Really? No, no, I'm pretty sure you're the one with bad jokes, but I think I'm ready. Okay, let's get into it then. What is social media? <clears throat> so this um, definition comes from a website called Tech Target, and it says social media is the collective of online communications channels dedicated to community-based input, interaction, content sharing, and collaboration. Websites and applications dedicated to forums, micro-blogging, social networking, social bookmarking, social curation, and wikis are among the different types of social media. Some examples of social media include Facebook, Twitter, Wikipedia, LinkedIn, Reddit, and Pinterest. So when we talk social media today, we're going to be talking pretty much anything that has to do with interacting with other people online and specifically a few social media networks. So any questions or anything to add to that? No, not really. Okay, so let's let's get right into it. We'll talk about why teens use social media and, and what I'm going to do is bounce some of these off of you and and get your feedback on them okay all right so what i have here is just a list of social media sites okay or or reasons i should say and this comes from an australian company called reachout.com so the number one reason that they have on here for using social media is talking to your friends. So do you use social media to talk to your friends? 
Well, if, like, there's no other way, like, if I don't actually have their number or, like, they have, like, a certain other account, yes, but normally I have my friends' numbers. I've never actually had to go on, like, any real social media. I mean, there's, there's this one app I use called Kids Messenger where my mom, like, make sure I have like people who I know and I can and I'm able to talk to them by texting or video calling. Okay. So so when you talk to your friends, you usually actually call them on the phone then? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. You don't hear most kids do that. So besides the kids messenger, how else do you communicate with your friends outside the phone? Um, like outside the phone, like with no other apps or... Well, I'm saying if you're not calling them and you're not using social, the kids' messenger, how else would you communicate with them? I would normally actually just talk to them in person because we all know each other. Most of my friends are actually some of my neighbors. And um, I go to summer camp and school with some of my friends. So you don't FaceTime with them? I mean, I do FaceTime with them occasionally. That's what I'm talking about. So you'll, you'll FaceTime with them and you'll... Do you text message them yep okay um the next thing next reason that they have is joining in on group conversations so do you participate in any kind of group conversation through social media Mm, not really no so you don't do like skype chats or um any kind of forums or anything like that where multiple people are contributing to it i mean to be honest you went we normally do Skype chats, chats when you're, like, far away or, like, at work and you can't, like, be here to see us or like, you're, like, on a business trip. But those are typically person-to-person at that point. Yeah. No. I mean, me and Mommy are on one side and then you're on the other side. But honestly, I've never actually had anything where I've basically just, like, talked with another group. Okay. So the next thing that they have here is learning about current events and staying up to date with online content. So I think I think what they're kind of referring to here is in, on Facebook, for instance. On Facebook, you have your news feed. So your news feed is a collection of updates that your friends on Facebook may post. And it's a curated collection of news articles that Facebook generates for you. Do you use that for anything? And I'm not talking, it doesn't have to be necessarily like world news or anything like that, but do you use it for keeping up on gaming news or anything going on with schools or any other activities? Honestly, I really don't think so. I honestly don't even have Facebook or any of the news websites on for social media. I don't actually, real, even though I have like Snapchat and Instagram, I honestly don't use them as much. I don't really use them. Okay. So do you actually keep up with with news of things that you're interested in, like new games that are coming out or new toys or or TV shows or anything like that? How do you normally consume that information? Honestly, normally I just actually watch commercials on TV. Otherwise, you normally, like, tell me some of the new stuff because, honestly, I don't even bother to, like, go on social media for that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the next thing that they had on here was meeting new people. Have you ever met anyone? Not necessarily face-to-face, but have you been introduced to new people through any of the social media channels? Um, well, my mom, Mommy, she has a bunch of friends, and some of the friends are in my age group, and on Kids Messenger, she actually put some of the kids on my messenger who had them and like i mean i talked to them i've never like i don't think i've seen too many of them face to face but i've seen some of them face to face as well okay interesting one one example i I could give for that would be my gaming group so you know i play an online mmo video game and we have a very large community over 700 people from around the world are in our particular community Mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of those people I've been introduced to online but not met face to face Um, but there's a lot of them that I have met you even met some of them face to face when we've done our guild meet and greets Mm -hmm. 
So that's kind of a classic example of doing something like that. Yeah. So the next one that they have is you use social media because you don't have anything to do or you're feeling bored. So is social media a alternative to being bored for you? I think, like, um, whenever I'm sort of bored, I would um, go see if, like, my friends are online and I try to text them and talk to them, see, like, what's up and, like, if they're what they're up to, if, like, they're able to talk to me, so. So it's a good way of keeping in touch with people and, you know, finding out if they're available to, to maybe do something socially then. Yep. Okay. I think that. That kind of fits the bill there. The last thing that they've got on here is uh, they use social media, teens use social media because they feel like they might miss out on something if they aren't always up to date with social media. So, like, that's their primary way of getting, I don't know, social feedback at that point. You know, where normally, for you, how would you normally keep in touch with your friends? Is it school? Is it camp this time of year? It's normally camp this time of year because most of my friends I'm able to see at camp. And, like, the friends that don't go to my school I'm still able to see. And I'm able to keep in touch with Mariah, even though she doesn't go to camp. I'm able to keep in touch with her because we have each other's numbers now and we're going to the same school. And um, I normally just talk with them, like, see what's up to date. And, like, if it's, like, one of my friends who I haven't seen in a while, um, 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 I, we would just talk on the phone and just see, like, what's up to date. So it sounds like you're more of a traditional media type of person, like, talking on the phone. And, and you know, unlike a lot of people today, you're really not a slave to social media. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. I think that's that's a healthy take on things. I think a lot of people today tend to immerse themselves too much in social media. Yeah, honestly, I don't actually really see the point of showing strangers about your, showing like random people online about your life. Honestly, I'm just okay with just sharing it with the people I know. Except for this podcast, of course, because you know you're talking about incredibly intimate things in this podcast that goes out to the entire public. Yeah, honestly, I think this will be as far as it can go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's good. That's 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 an interesting take on things. So, when we come back, we'll talk about the good and the bad. So, this information comes from the Academy of Children and Adolescent Psychiatry. So we have a list of good and we have a list of bad. I'll let you choose which one we go first. Um, I guess we can start with the bad and then we can go on to the good for a better. Okay. Just, or do you want... No, That's no. up to you. You, you mean, pick. You want bad first? Should we just like say the good so it doesn't really blind the bad? Well, I think if you do the bad, we'll feel better if we do the good after the bad. Okay, fine. The bad okay. first. So, the bad. So, the first thing here, and I think it's probably the most obvious thing, but a lot of people don't realize all the things that fall into this category, and that is exposure to harmful or inappropriate content, uh, sex, drugs, violence, and so forth. Uh, you know how protective... I can be at times and how I'm, I'm constantly trying to regulate what you're exposed to. Mm -hmm. um, so it sort of terrifies me what is out there on social media and knowing that you've got a computer and you've got uh, a, a cell phone and stuff like that and what you're potentially exposed to. I just want to say I normally just use my laptop for like the podcast and like, um, my homework for school and stuff and honestly i really rarely ever play any games on there and that's true you know and and i guess i'm fortunate that that's you know the limit that you use it for now but you know things change yep so the next thing that they have here kind of goes hand in hand with the first and that is exposure to dangerous people 
Um, so you, under, you understand what they mean by this? Yeah, basically like people who want to harm you, people who like are like dangerous in other ways. Yeah, I mean you have – there's a lot of – People that are out there that want to corrupt you, they want to they want to get you to do bad things. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a lot of bad people, child molesters, for instance, who want to do bad things to you. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of sick people out there um, who prey on on children. Um, and and yes, that's true for the world in general. Um, I think the threat from a social media standpoint is is probably a little bit different because of the veil of anonymity people feel like they have on the internet. You know, kids may get on the internet and play around and talk to people. You don't know if the person that you're talking to on the other end of the connection, you know, they may say they're 15 years old and may turn out to be a 35-year-old pervert who's trying to get you, trying to lure you out of the house to do something. Mm -hmm. Um it's a lot different trying to combat that than someone who's trying to stop you on the street. You know, they pull up in a car and they try to convince you to get into the car. Uh, there's a much more um, obvious danger to that than how people can try to manipulate you through social media. So there's a mm -hmm. real danger there. Yep. One of the other ones that we have here, and, and this is a big one too, um, but this happens more more or less from people your own age, and that's cyberbullying. Um, you know, the, the some of the factors of cyberbullying, and we talked about this a little bit in our bullying special um, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, cyberbullying itself happens all the time, um, and it's a risk factor for depression and suicide because – People feel exposed. They tend to take the, the internet too seriously, really. Mm -hmm. And people can be very cruel. And it has a, a significant psychological effect on people. So, again, it's another one of these things where somebody might not come up to your face at school or on the street and say things to you that they'll say to you on the internet because they're hiding behind some kind of anonymous username. Mm-hmm. And they think that that gives them some level of of immunity to any kind of consequences, so they're more likely to engage in in cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. So that's something that just to be aware of there. Um, so the first three things are things that are out there that can hurt you, or they're external threats. Whereas the next one here is really one that you control yourself, and that is oversharing of personal information. Um, ex tell, me, tell me some of the things that you talk about with your friends when you talk to them on the phone or, or elsewhere. Honestly. You know, is, it, is it personal information, or is it just the stuff that you would normally talk about in school? I mean, it's stuff I would normally talk about unless I've been having a really bad day. Then I'd, like, tell them about the cause, and, like, they'd help me calm down and stuff. Other than that, nothing really personal. I mean, if they have something personal going on, they'd, of course, let me know, and i try to help them through it. Right. So, But it's more like personal conversation type stuff, um, not critical information. Like like one of the things that always comes to mind to me, because um, all of our devices track us now. Like all the apps track us, and they report back to servers and stuff like that. Um, like mommy and I recently started playing the Harry Potter game. Yep. Well, in order for the Harry Potter game to work, you have to allow it to turn on location awareness. Well, every time it pings where you are in order to play the game, it sends it back to a server somewhere. Now, there's permissions, controls, and stuff that you can turn off there, but people like to check in where they're at. You know, this is one of the things that that mommy used to do, and unfortunately, doesn't do anymore. You know, she would check in when she went to the grocery store or, or to a concert or something like that. And that kind of information, when it gets out there, could be used for harmful reasons. Like, for instance, if you post, oh, well, we're, we're on vacation, you know, the last week of July. Well, 
anybody can get into that information if they compromise a friend's account. So they could burglarize your house, you know, they could, you know, pick up packages, you know, rob your mail, whatever. But um, it's that kind of oversharing of information. It's not like, you know, talking about your feelings with your friend. It's like saying, oh, you know, we have a doctor's appointment Tuesday at 6 and, you know, my mom and dad are taking me to the doctor's appointment. Okay, that might be innocent to talk about. But that's also telling people that nobody's in the house at that time period. So that's sort of how, that's some of the information that you want to guard. You know, you don't want to give away, obviously, passwords. You don't want to give away social security numbers. You don't want to give away any identifying information. Um, and you don't want to give away anything that may indicate a vulnerability that you might have. So that's kind of what they're talking about there. Mm-hmm. Um. The other thing, and this is another external threat, and that's exposure to excessive advertisements. Uh, and it's funny that that this is one of the concerns of social media because you know how I feel about you know watching TV and the commercials on TV, right? Mm-hmm. I hate watching live TV because mm-hmm. of the advertisements. Yep. So tell me, when you use the internet. Yep. Um, for anything, it doesn't necessarily have to be social media. Do you find that you're bombarded with advertising in your games or your apps that you run? Yeah, a lot of times in this one game I like like to play Gosh to Life. There's always some type of ad, and I always have to close out the app to get rid of it, but the sound's always there if like, I turn the volume up. Same with YouTube. There's always ads that pop up, and they always annoy me, especially when you can't skip ahead, and it's yeah. super annoying. Yeah, that is very annoying. Unfortunately, that's usually how most people monetize. You know, they give you a free app and they have to make money somehow, so they sell advertising. Um, But I think the risk that they're referring to here is when you get overexposed to it. You know, you you may be tempted to buy things that you shouldn't buy. Um, A lot of times ads on the Internet aren't legitimate ads. And they're what are called phishing attempts where... They try to get you to give them information when you click on it. For instance, they may say, oh, uh, here's a $500 gift card to the Apple store. Click here to, to redeem. And you'll click there, and it'll look like it's the Apple store when you go in and ask you for your username and password. But it's really not the Apple store. It's a, what's called a man-in-the-middle attack. And they'll capture your information. They'll pass it over to the Apple Store so that you can go through and do whatever it is that it's trying to do, usually. But them trying to get you to give them that information, they can then store it and then use it for something else. So it's basically ca- like catfishing. Ki- kind of like that, but from a financial side of things. Yeah. Um, you know, and it exposes you to malicious software, too. Sometimes you'll get an ad up there that, you know, you click here to close the ad and it doesn't really close it, but it downloads software to your computer and can cause a problem. So the overexposure to ads, whether they're good ads or bad ads, you know, it's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, The next one that we have here, and we've talked about this one in the past, is uh, privacy concerns including the collection of data about teens, which we kind of talked about already. Um, But a lot of times what you'll get are websites that are portrayed as um, hobby websites or fun websites. Like you've seen these ones where, oh, find out what your Jedi name is. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like, oh, well, it's your first name and your mother's maiden name and this and that. And, And what they're doing at that point is, they're, they're trying to get information out of you that are elements to other security questions you'll run into for banking and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And they'll catalog that and they'll start putting the pieces together so that they can compromise your other accounts. Um, and it's great for, for brute forcing passwords too because a lot of people make the mistake of using common information in their passwords. You know, um, uh, kids' birthdays or uh, dogs' name, pets' names, you know, stuff like that. Things that 
um, people can get out of you just through what, what's called social engineering, where they can just talk to you you'll, and, and they'll play you for that information. Then they can go back and try to hack your accounts using combinations of that information. And it happens quite frequently, actually. Mm-hmm. And that leads into the next one, which is identity theft. Now, have you ever heard of identity theft? Yeah. So explain to me what your understanding of identity theft is. Well, from my understanding of identity, th- uh, of identity theft is that someone um, wants to take your information and pass it off as if it's them. So basically, my idea of it is basically like someone gets information out of you, like personal stuff, and like knows your account, and when you're not on it, you go on the account and... They can probably, like, say mean things about their friends, causing you to have trouble with your friends. They can also say stuff that you would never say, and, like, you'd eventually probably have, like, consequences happen to you. And that's, a, that's generally what it is. I think, I think that's a more polite description of it. Um, in the, the really bad aspects of it, what they tend to do is they'll collect enough information on you to compromise your bank account and steal all the money in your bank account. Or they'll compromise your credit card account and they'll report your credit card stolen. They'll change the address, the known address, and have a new credit card sent to them under your name. Or they'll open a credit card under your name with their address information. So there's a lot of consequences that when these sort of things happen, it's very difficult to turn things back and and get this stuff straightened out. So that's one of the reasons why you need to be very conscious of your own privacy, what information you put out there. Um, The way that you're using social media, it's probably not that big of a problem. If you start using something more frequently like Facebook or Twitter or um, Instagram, you know, when you're putting information out there that stays forever, that's one of the biggest concerns out there now is that you don't have control over your data once it hits the internet. So any statements that you make, any pictures that you put out there, that stuff stays forever. You know, there are sites out there that archive the internet. So even if you put a post up today and delete it tomorrow, chances are some site has spidered that and archived it and it's out there forever. Mm -hmm. And people can use it for various things, identity theft being one of them. So just things to keep in mind. Yep. The last thing that we have on the list here is more of a health concern, really. Um, It's interference with sleep, exercise, homework, or family activities. So basically just like an overconsumption of it. Exactly. You know, internet addiction. We've spoken about that before. Yep. Um, so that's that's another one of the harmful things. And a lot of people get very addicted to social media. And for a number of reasons, but a lot of times it's because of the sense of satisfaction that people get from the exposure. You know, when I when I say something to you, you hear it, you might react to it. When I post something on the internet, on my Twitter account, and it trends and I get 10,000 people that are liking it, there's a psychological effect that has. And it's almost like a drug. You know, people get that sense of, of satisfaction and they get a, self, a sense of self-worth out of how people react to them. Mm-hmm. And that can cause them to have, you know, certain symptoms similar to drug addiction. Mm -hmm. And then they need more of it. And they're staying up until 3 o'clock in the morning trying to get this stuff. And they're not sleeping right. And, you know, it has an adverse effect on their health. Uh, So it's very important to to keep a handle on that stuff. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about the good things. Yeah. Okay. We got all the bad stuff, fellas. Bring in the good news. So that, yes, that was all the bad stuff that we had here. So the good stuff is pretty legitimate. Mm -hmm. One, which you use it for, staying connected to friends. So not all your friends live nearby. Like how many of your friends 
um, do you connect to on social media that live within a two block radius of you? Um, Mariah being one of them, probably Natalia. Um, I guess Stevie and Sevilla would be them so, as well. But none of them live close to you is what I'm saying. Well, Mariah lives close, but I don't know about Natalia or Stephen and Sophia. Right. Well, but you can't walk to Natalia's house. Yeah. You know, you can walk to, you know, your next door neighbor's house and interact with them. So social media is less critical. Yeah. But in a situation with someone that you need to get a ride to or set up, you know, a play date with or something like that, social media allows you to stay in touch with them, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, meeting new friends. Um, with shared interests. I know you haven't used it for this yet. Yep. But I'll go back to my example of the gaming group. You know, I've been in the, I've been running the gaming group for seven years now, almost. And I've met, met, I say, you know, mostly in a virtual sense, but, you know, it's people that I hang out with online and we talk and we, you know, we talk about each other's kids and how was your day and stuff like that. I mean, just like you would socialize with your friends, well over 2,000 people from this. Mm-hmm. You know, people come, people go. But had I not been part of that gaming community, I would have never met any of those people. So it's a great way to meet new friends. Even if it's not face-to-face, it still qualifies. Mm-hmm. Um, finding community. And support for specific activities. Now, I don't want to keep going to the well on the gaming community, but what do you think? What kind of uh, support groups or social groups do you think you could find that that might be out on social media somewhere? Um, I really don't know because I don't have that much exposure to real social media because I don't. Well, let me ask this. What are some of your, your interests? Um, you just had a recent experience where you met a new friend at camp. Yep. Because of a shared, shared um, hobby. Yep. So what was, what was the hobby? Right. Uh, drawing. Right. So you may find a kid's Facebook group out there dedicated to drawing. Where, you're, you know, they may talk about different drawing techniques. They may share their drawings. You may collaborate. In storytelling, one of the things I did with my gaming group, you you know I'd like to write, was I had a collaboration with seven different people, you know, from Wisconsin to Bangladesh to, uh, I think one was in Europe somewhere, you know, I would never be able to collaborate in a writing project like that if I didn't have that kind of social environment. So you may be able to find a group like that that works very well for your drawing hobby or your little pet shops, you know, if you're still into that or painting or, you know, whatever interest you might have playing the trumpet, you might find people. I know uh, my boss who also is a music producer, he's collaborated with other artists around the country on music projects. You know, they have an online community they collaborate through. They'll send samples back and forth. He'll mix them together. So it's it's pretty amazing some of the things you can do if you want it to. Mm-hmm. Um, sharing artwork or music. Okay, I think we just talked about that one. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, when MySpace used to be around years ago, one of the things I was into at the time was photography. So I would publish my... You know, my artsy-fartsy photographs up on my MySpace, and, you know, people used to enjoy looking at them. Uh, And the last one that they have here is exploring and expressing themselves. Um, And this kind of goes hand-in-hand with some of the bad stuff I was talking about with anonymity. So, for instance, if you're a shy person, social media is, is ideal for you because you can have a voice without having the exposure because you can do it anonymously. So I don't know, pick a topic, whether it's politics or religion or news or whatever it is you want to talk about, you might not feel comfortable talking about that with your friends. 
um, because it may be some controversial topics. Mm -hmm. But you can do that on the internet anonymously and still express yourself. Mm -hmm. So that was what we had for, you know, I, I know it sounds like we had a lot more bad than good, but. You know, this is more a cautionary podcast than anything else. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. Uh, anything to add to the good or the bad? No. No? All right. Let us move on. So, statistics. You know, I love my statistics, and this these even though you haven't done them in like a bunch of in like a while. Well, we haven't had p topics that really lent themselves to statistic analysis. Two point. So, this actually comes from one of the most recognized um, statistics companies compilers out there, the Pew Research Center. So, I want to get. I'm going to give you these statistics, and then I want to get your feedback on what you think. Gotcha. So 81% of those you, who use social media feel more connected with their friends. Uh, do you agree or disagree with that? I agree. You agree. So it does help you feel more connected. Yep. 69% think it helps teens interact with a more diverse group of people. Um, I'd agree with that even though I haven't been exposed to it yet, but I'm pretty sure eventually I will. And I'm pretty sh and I know from talks that I'm pretty sure that's true. Okay. Uh, 68% feel as if they have people who will support them through tough times through social media. I agree. Okay. 45% feel overwhelmed by all the drama on social media. Isn't that the truth? Um, well, well, are you exposed to a lot of drama on social media, though? No, but I know, like, there is drama on there. I've been, I've the, never been exposed to it, but if there's drama in real life, there's probably going to be drama on social media. Well, that's true. I mean, drama, drama persists everywhere. You really can't get away from it. Yep, unless you literally lock yourself in the room and all you do is, and all you do is basically just sit on your f floor drawing comics. That's awfully specific, but okay. Just saying. Uh, yeah, just saying. It has nothing to do with anything you've done, right? Yeah. 43% uh, feel pressure to only post um, that which makes them look good to others. Never had that happen to me, but probably happens to other people. Now, let me ask you, in non-social media social situations... Do you feel pressured to say and do things that are designed to make you look good to others? Honestly, no, because I just consider that sort of bragging and telling people, hey, I'm good, I'm, I'm really good. But, like, honestly, I've never actually been pressured to do that. I've actually never really ever been pressured to say I'm good at stuff. Honestly, I kind of don't even say that some of my... Some of the things I do are kind of bad. Well, which yeah, I and, and which I don't think is healthy. I would I would agree with your assessment there that you are generally a pretty modest individual. Um, you don't do what I like to refer to as end zone dancing. Okay. You know when you score a touchdown and you go and do a little dance in the end zone. Well, that's your job. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to dance. You're supposed to score touchdowns. So yeah. you're, you don't really toot your own horn that often, we'll say. Yeah. The last one that we had on here was 37% feel pressure to post con uh, content that will get a lot of likes and comments. Never had that happen because I don't actually use real social media that happens with that. But I'm pretty sure people who do that, a.k.a. the people who crave it, and do and are addicted to it probably do that yeah i would agree i mean that feeds into that narcissistic personality where you need some kind of uh vindication or or you know exposure you know you need to have those eyes on you and to make you feel better yep and you're usually not a glory hound like that either honestly i don't actually really care if people like um like something i post even though i have 
like never posted anything. Yeah, you you tend to take that from me, I think. I mean, if they do like it, I'm thankful, but I honestly don't. If not, you don't care. Yep. I'm with you. I'm with you 100% there. That was all we had with statistics. I didn't find too many statistics. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. So we shall move on. So I said earlier this was a cautionary podcast of social media. So the last thing that we have, the last segment we have here uh, that I put together was important things to remember when using social media. And it's sort of a basic etiquette. You know, just Mm -hmm. like you have etiquette when you're eating out of the nice uh, restaurant or you go to a party. There are certain ways you're, yeah. you should act, okay? Yep. Uh, this comes from the site that we've used many times in the past, kidshealth.org. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. So the first thing that they have here is be nice, right? Yep. So mean behavior is not okay. Make it clear that you expect your kids to treat others with respect and to never post hurtful or embarrassing messages. And ask them always to tell you about any harassing or bullying messages that others post. Honestly, I think not only does that go with social media, it also goes with life. I agree. I think that's a a good philosophy to have across the board. Mm -hmm. Um, And usually, the litmus test that I go by is if I'm going to post something on Twitter or, or whatever, even an email that I send, I'll write it and then I'll read it back. Yep. And if you read it back as though it was sent to you, you can figure out how someone else is going to feel by reading it. Yep. And, you know, not all the time, but the vast majority of the time, you can usually catch things that you put in there that probably shouldn't go in there. Yep. So be nice. Um. And this feeds right into the next one here, which is think twice before hitting enter. Yep. Uh, Remind teens that what they post can be used against them, like your Miranda rights. Yeah. Um, Whatever those are. When you get arrested, Ah. they say, you know, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you have no right to an attorney. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. So before you say anything, think twice. Yep. Same thing here. Um, For example, letting the world know that you're off on vacation and posting your home address gives would-be robbers a chance to strike. Yep. Teens should also avoid posting specific locations of parties or events as well as phone numbers. So, again, any identifying information you want to not put out there. Uh, let's see. Next is, and I've already said this, once it's on the internet, it's there forever. Mm-hmm. Don't share anything on social media that you wouldn't want your teachers, college admissions, officers, future bosses, friends, or family to see. Once it's on the internet, it's there forever. There are no take backs. So I, I don't, think I can emphasize that enough. Yep. One of the things that employers are doing now, uh, even my own employer, you know, I was recently hiring for a position at my company and our HR director informed me that a couple of the candidates that I had asked her to bring in, uh, she had gone out to their social media sites because they listed them on their, on their website, on their resume, which because it was a, the nature of the job, people would do that to show off some of their portfolio work. Mm-hmm. And uh, a couple of the people there had some, what would have been considered inappropriate posts on their website. Yeah. And it immediately disqualified them from being interviewed. Because mm-hmm. uh, there are certain strict uh, policies that we have because of the nature of our business uh, they were clearly demonstrating violation of those policies, so we couldn't even bring them in for an interview because of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a lot of people tend to post silly things out there, and you have to be very careful because anyone can see that information. Yeah. 
Uh, use privacy settings. So privacy settings are important. Uh, go through them together to make sure your kids understand each one. Also explain that passwords are there to protect them against things like identity theft. They should never share them with anyone, even a boyfriend, girlfriend, or best friend. So passwords probably are the single worst level of security ever invented by man. Because the f people who have to use passwords tend to use passwords they can remember. Okay? And passwords that you can remember generally are easy to remember. They're common words. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many people at work use pa a combination of password and some kind of number. It's And, and that's what people use all the time. Um, it's certainly not unique to my, my company. Uh, but what you really should be using for passwords are complex, random combinations of letters, numbers, and characters. Uh, you should be using a unique password for every site. Do not do not reuse the same password uh, on multiple sites. And use password managers like I use, and, and you know they're not sponsoring the podcast, so it's not really a plug, but I use LastPass. And uh, LastPass is fantastic. It can do autofills. It works on mobile devices. It works on all your browsers. And you can keep all your passwords in there and keep them unique. So you never have to remember any passwords from any of your sites. You just need to remember the master password to get in the last pass. Mm -hmm. And you make that complicated. Yep. So you got to secure yourself. And the last one that they have here is really pretty obvious. And it's not social media specific. And that's don't friend strangers. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know them, don't friend them. Uh, it's plain, simple, and safe rule of thumb. Now, friending them on social media is a lot different than friending, being friends with someone in real life. And that rule's fairly simple, but I need to expound on the concept of friending someone to begin with. Just because someone friends you on social media doesn't mean they're your friend. Yeah. Um, so when they unfriend you, it doesn't mean they're mad at you or it doesn't mean that you're not friends with them anymore or something like that. The term friend has no meaning whatsoever in social media. Mm -hmm. Think of it more like associate or connect. When I check the box to friend you, I'm just connecting to you. Um, a lot of people tend to get bent out of shape if they get unfriended by people. Mm -hmm. So just a word of caution on that. Um, I think that was all that I had. Did you have any questions or anything to add? Well, I do want to put on this one thing. Now, I think, so there was this one TV show I watched, and one of the episodes was about one of the main characters getting addicted to something similar to Facebook called Fastapic, is what they called it in the episode. Okay. And basically... Um, instead of likes, like in Facebook, there were hearts, and when he got to a certain amount of Fastabic friends, he eventually got put into the app, a.k.a. addicted, uh -huh. probably. Right. And then his friend had to come, had to join him in the app and tell him that nothing in there was, we was real, and that no none of the Fastabic friends were actually his real friends, and that... Their real friends were waiting in the real world. Right. So it was kind of a, an analogy to becoming addicted to social media is what it sounds like. And how, like, you should know that none of the people who aren't, are not really your friends are actually your friends, are actually not your friends. Like, exactly. even though they friend you, they're not really your friend if they're not actually, if you don't actually know them. That's a very good point. All right, well, we'll come back, we'll get your closing remarks, and your shout-outs. And I turn it over to you, my dear. So I just want to say social media is good to a certain extent. As long as you don't use it and for bad reasons like putting out too much information, 
making sure you check over what you're writing and try to only talk to people who you know. If you have been cyberbullied or someone is telling you to do something that you know is wrong, um, immediately tell an adult or someone you trust so they can help you deal with the situation and don't try to deal with it on your own or, or do it or do it the way they want you to do it. Basically, just make sure you have someone you can trust and someone who will be there to help you, like I say in pretty much every single one of my closing remarks. Make sure you have someone there to help you. Social media, I definitely say it's good to a certain extent. I'm not too much exposed to it, but I just want to say for people who are addicted, just know um, a thumbs up and a friend doesn't really mean anything. And please don't get addicted because it'll ruin your sleep schedule and your way of living. Okay. Well, that was a, a nice rambling closing remark there. Mm -hmm. uh, shout outs. I guess I'll have a shout out to all my friends who I'm not able to see very often who I have to connect on the internet with because I'm just glad that Th I can trust them, and th I know they won't do anything to hurt me. And I'm also happy that I'm still able to stay in touch, and that's only the r real reason why I actually use social media. Not really for any other major ones. Okay, that's awesome. And I think that's it for this week. Um, in an ironic twist of announcements, I do want to uh, make mention that uh, you can now find us on uh, Facebook, we now have a podcast uh, page on Facebook on their insights under thing, uh, insights into things. Yeah, um, more social media stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to encourage people to use social media if, if they don't feel comfortable. Um, so yeah, it does feel weird. Uh, this check feels out weird now. It, well, it does, but check out the uh, our website www.insightsintothings.com. You get all of our podcasts, video, audio. You can subscribe. You can offer feedback to us. Um, and I think that's all Negative I have. Negative or positive. Negative or positive. We take it all. Um, and I think that's all we had this week. All right. Bye. Bye.